How's it going, guys? So it is 3.31 a.m. Friday, April 1st, 2022 here in Japan, and I just want to thank you guys for March being the biggest month we've had so far. So roughly double the views and visitors on the main website, and the YouTube here has grown about 20%. So over 500 of you have joined the past month. I really appreciate it. So at 20, about 2,500 right now. Um, you know, and maybe in time I'll look back and say, wow, like I remember when that was a big number, okay? Uh, you know, maybe I will view 2,500 as tiny someday, but I communicate from an angle of humility because who the fuck am I to have a channel that grows? But I try to put out consistent content for you guys. Hopefully you find some value in it. And the growth of this channel is contingent on uh, you guys helping to share the word about it. I mean, posting about it on social media, uh, Reddit, sharing it with your friends. Okay, so uh, I really appreciate it if uh, you help grow this channel. Okay. And subscribe if you're new here already and you haven't, and give the video a like, I really appreciate it. So how about I start the fucking clip? How does that sound? All right. So not going to be a lengthy clip. Easy question here. So 54-year-old woman, one-year history of generalized muscle pain. It's worse during stress, but is always present. Vitals are normal. Uh, physical examination unremarkable, apart from 12 areas of muscle point tenders. In addition to recommending aerobic exercise, question just wants to know the most appropriate pharm pharmacologic therapy. So let's just walk backwards through the answer choices. Choice F, opioid therapy, wrong fucking answer. Uh, opioids on US MLE will be classically surgery or psych forms where a patient has come out of an operation, is taking more conservative pain meds such as acetaminophen, and is still in severe pain. And the answer is you give opioids, okay? Uh, even if the patient has history of opioid or heroin addiction or is a current addict, you never withhold pain meds. That's a really important point for US MLE. Uh, and obviously, uh, overdose, we treat with uh, naloxone, naltrexone, uh, pinpoint pupils, respiratory depression. Okay, very high yield for you, Simile. Wrong fucking answer in this case. Oh, actually, I can add another point for step one. You need to know respiratory depression caused by drugs such as opioids, benzos, barbiturates, um, where CO2 is increased and arterial or oxygen is decreased. There's a normal AA gradient, okay? It's not an elevated AA gradient. I'm not going to go into a lengthy discussion on that right now, but normal AA gradient uh, when you have decreased oxygenation due to uh, opioids. Evening primrose oil, wrong answer. This will never show up in US simile. It's just a trolling answer on my end, but this is a real thing, okay? It can be used uh, for breast pain. Uh, in women who have fibrocystic change, okay? But it will never get asked in you simile, just a trolling answer on my end. Choice D, corticosteroids, wrong answer. Uh, these would be used for polymyositis as well as polymyalgia rheumatica. In contrast, the diagnosis here is fibromyalgia, a psych condition. The answer is antidepressant therapy. Now, this is how they write it on NBME material, okay? Student says, but wait, the patient's not depressed. Right, the patient isn't depressed, but we treat fibromyalgia with SSRIs, okay? I mean, apart from any type of uh, CBT, et cetera, that might be done, uh, we use SSRIs, antidepressant therapy, it's the answer. So it's just a psych condition. They can mention classically areas of muscle point tenderness, uh, symmetric areas of muscle point tenderness, uh, 12 of them, okay? Stresses, it's a psych condition, all right? ESR will not be elevated, nothing about autoimmune disease. In contrast, pymalgia rheumatica, and pyomyositis can both present with muscle pain and stiffness. They might tell you that there's elevated uh, ESR. Sometimes you can get a low-grade fever in autoimmune flares. They can mention uh, history of autoimmune flares in the patient or in the family, uh, whether it's SLE, IBD, okay, RA, like autoimmune diseases go together. So how do we differentiate pyomyositis from pyomyositis rheumatica? In pyomyositis, you will have uh, either an elevated CK, creatine kinase, and or muscle weakness on physical exam. It must be on physical exam. So, for example, if they say 55-year-old woman complains of muscle pain, and weak, uh, muscle pain and weakness, and you say, oh, that's weakness, that's pyomyositis, it must be on physical exam. Okay, so they can say she says weakness, but there's five out of five muscle strength on physical exam. That's not weakness, okay? And if CK is not mentioned as elevated, it's, py it's pyomyalgia rheumatica. Okay, so pyomyositis, increased CK uh, or muscle weakness in physical exam. You give steroids for both. Um, you can also know PMR, pyomyalgia rheumatica, associated with temporal arteritis. You're going to uh, give steroids first to prevent possibility of blindness before you biopsy.
Uh, benzo's wrong answer. Highest yield use on US similarly is going to be alcohol withdrawal, delirium tremens, alcohol hallucinosis. They'll say guy, uh, 44 year old male, uh, had surgery two days ago. He's in the hospital and he has tremors, uh, tachycardia, delirium. The answer is just diazepam, uh, lorazepam, chlordiazepoxide. Okay, give benzos alcohol withdrawal. As well as uh, we give benzos for acute anxiety, such as clonazepam. They might just say a woman has general uh, stress about um, her mother was diagnosed with breast cancer and she's really like, she's not sleeping. Okay, so in, insomnia with, with acute stress, you can give a benzo, that's on the psych forms. Uh, benzo can also be used for social phobia when the patient has asthma. So for example, stage fright, you give propranolol, but beta blocker. But if the patient has asthma and social phobia, you give the benzo, okay? They make that distinction on the psych forms. And as I said, the answer here is SSRI for the fibromyalgia. Amantadine, wrong answer. Yieldiness, non-existent on USMLA. Okay, I mean, this is a, a use for Parkinson's disease, increases presynaptic release of dopamine, can also theoretically be used to prevent viral encoding uh, for influenza. Yieldiness, practically non-existent. I don't believe I've ever seen this on uh, NBME material for step one or two. Okay, maybe one question tops, nothing off the top of my head, more just something floating around in resources. You know the deal, I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.